Yeah. All right, joining me tonight, she's so hot, she gives the sun a Dana Lash sunburn. It's Dana Lash, host of the syndicated radio show, The Dana Show, and Dana on the blaze. And he's so sharp, he's not allowed near condom factories. It's Tony Saye, Republican strategist and Fox News contributor. All right, so, Dan, I want to go to you first. He's right. obviously making a huge splash. I'm, I'm wondering, however, if this is just a it's, a... it's kind of a natural advantage when you're dealing with conservatives who already hate government. No, I, and I think I love your monologue, by the way, because I think it's spot on. It's, this is turning into Troll 16 and, <laughs> instead of deciding who's going to be in the White House. It's Mean Girls 2. People are angry, though, and they don't want a boring, focus group tested primary. And so, really, I think he who slaps the hardest or she who slaps the hardest is that's the person who's going to win in 2016. And I wish some of these other candidates would wake up and realize that they don't have to be so careful and kittens in sunshine with their speech all of the time. But I, 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 don't, I think it's more the message than the record at this point. I mean, we still have, what, a year to be completely disappointed by everybody else, so there's time. That's true. You know, Tony, we've got a year, which means by this time next year, all the candidates could be mud wrestling naked in a giant, like, cage. The way that this would be is going. That would be disgusting. Thank you for that image, by Sorry. the way. Look, look, I mean, getting <laughs> to understand Trump's appeal because of his irreverent competence, combativeness, the kind of candor that, as Dana says, a lot of these other guys lack, that's understandable. But the question I ask is, is this the guy that we want to be the champion, the voice of modern conservatism? I mean, you talk about his, the fact that we have all these Republican primary voters who they like the fact that he's irreverent and that he's loud, but at the same time, they don't like big government. Donald Trump was the poster child for crony capitalism, big government programs, taxpayer-funded projects for his construction um, and developments, which I love, by the way, here in New York. The guy declared bankruptcy four times. Is this the guy we're putting forward? But, you know, Dana, he makes a very good point about their shifting positions. You wrote a very pro-gun book. I think it was called Hands Off My Gun. You know that yeah. Donald has, has expressed very strong gun control beliefs. Are you worried that at, at some point he's going to return to that? I don't know what to think about Trump. I mean, he also told me Tuesday that he was never going to run for, as a, as a third-party candidate. And then Thursday, he tells The Hill, well, you know, if Republicans don't treat me nice, I may <laughs> run as a third-party candidate. I think he is just as shocked as anybody else that he is this far ahead in the polls. I don't, I, his record, to me, what it seems, he's not, a, I don't believe that he is a conservative. I yeah. don't. And I don't believe that he has a conservative record. I like the disruption, though, and I think he's sort of a Rorschach test. At least myself and everybody else who's watching this, we're sort of sitting back thinking, okay, well, is he going to maybe incite some of these other candidates to respond with the same force and fury? But, but you're right on this. I mean, he's, I mean, gun control, he's told me that he has a concealed carry permit for New York and that he carries in New York. But then in the past, you know, he said some different statements. So I don't know if he's come around or who knows? I mean, who knows what the guy thinks? Look, it, I, that's, well, well, the voters will decide it. Tony, uh, last word to you. I'm all for disruption. I want more excitement. I want some of these guys to stand up to the plate and give us something to be inspired by. I don't disagree. But at the end of the day, you have this situation now where all Donald Trump's campaign has boiled down to is personal insults. And I think that really hurts our mm -hmm. candidates in the long term because some of this does end up sticking on them because comedy, as you know well, Greg, it works. And by the way, I just want to say one thing. He's saying he might run as a third party candidate if the party doesn't treat him right. Now, all of a sudden, Donald Trump is a Fabergé egg. He has to be treated gently. We have to put him in bubble tape. Meanwhile, he's the self-anointed frontrunner. This is what happens. They go after you when you're leading the pack. Yeah, uh, uh, thanks for that point, because I was, I was just thinking that what Donald Trump is doing when he talks about a third-party candidacy, he's like the National Lampoon cover where <laughs> they got the gun to the dog's head, <laughs> and they're going, uh, buy this magazine or I'll shoot this dog. And, yeah. and, and uh, he's a celebrity uh, candidate. candidate Trump is saying, uh, support my candidacy or I'll shoot the party. Dane and Tony, thanks.